Hi, so in this tutorial I'm going to explain a little bit about max pooling. This is um, uh, section 9.3 of the deep learning book. And so what I'm going to be doing is explaining a little bit, like this, this is a kind of last missing piece that we need to um, understand before we can start doing convolutional neural networks. So um, in this section it explains that a typical layer of a convolutional uh, neural network consists of three stages and so the first stage consists of performing several convolutions in parallel to produce a set of linear activations second stage each linear activation is run through a nonlinear activation function and uh, so those two stages were pretty similar to what you were doing with um, with fully connected neural networks in the, in the previous projects so uh, the the difference being that the first stage, you know, the the, the convolution operation was replaced by a, a matrix multiplication that involves all of the inputs and all of the output units, right? So the third stage here is the new thing that we're learning about here. It's a, a pooling function to modify the output of the layer after the nonlinear activation function. So really common uh, pooling function is called the max pooling function. And um, yeah, the idea here um, is uh, of, of these kind of multi-stage layers is illustrated in this figure. So this is figure 9.7 from the deep learning book. And so here it explains two different kinds of terminologies that are used when we're talking about a convolutional layer. So you might see research papers that are talking about either a convolutional layer, and they might be talking about something like this, or they might be talking about something like this. So it depends on the context. So uh, try to not get confused when people talk about convolutional layers, they're either talking about one or the other. So on the left here, we're, um, when we talk about a convolutional layer, what it means is these three stages that we just talked about where the first stage at the bottom is the convolution stage, which is um, an affine transform. That means a you know linear application of the weights to the inputs, and then the detector stage, which is the application of uh, nonlinearity, such as the rectified linear activation function or the sigmoid activation function. That's the detector stage, and the third stage here is a pooling stage, and so grouping all of three of these things together, you get something that's called a convolutional layer, right? So that's one of the terminology. The other kind of terminology is um, calling each one of these things different layers. So here you would call this a convolution layer, uh, and that's just applying uh, the weights to the, the inputs. It's a linear transformation. Then you have this detector layer which is just applying the activation function and then you have the pooling layer which is just applying a pooling function which we'll talk about in a minute and so um if we go to look at the code here i have some r code that um that defines a neural network model in a, one of the r studio keras examples here you see it says layer convolution to the layer max pooling um and so this is kind of like yet another notation so um, here, it, the layer uh, here. This is this represents a two D convolution layer, and here the activation is kind of included in that definition. And then the next layer is a max pooling layer. So that's like somewhere in between the two, where actually they just group together these first two, and then they call this thing a second, uh, a separate layer. So yeah, there, there's lots of different um, terminologies. So try not to get confused. Sometimes people talk about grouping all of these together as a single layer. Sometimes they talk about uh, grouping some of these things together. And sometimes they just talk about each individual step as a layer. So try not to get confused with all the different terminologies. But yeah, these distinct things, like, so what we've been talking about before, you know, um, the we've talked about these these two steps before now let's talk about the max pooling um so this is kind of explained in figure 9.8 in the deep learning book the idea is, is um 
of this figure is to try to explain the invariance that's been surfaced by um, max pooling. And so what we see is that um, in the two, two, two diagrams, on the top, uh, we have a pool, the units after pooling, and then we have the at the bottom, the units before pooling. So these units at the bottom, these are maybe the, the units after applying the sigmoid function or the other, any other activation function. And then, so immediately after the pooling is applied to this. And so what does the pooling do? Well, we see that um, every one of these output units in the pooling are, you know, there's three arrows going to it, right? So here there's one arrow going to this guy from the one right below it and the, the two neighbors to the left and the right. And so what the pooling operation does is it's taking the max of all of these numbers which are pointing to it. So here the max of 0 0.1, 1, and 0 0.2 is 1. Right? 1 is the biggest number in all of those guys. Here, if we're looking at this one, we have to look at these three values. And so the max of those three values is 1. So this value is, is 1. And so if we look at this one, well, we don't see what the value is over here, but we, we can assume that it's lower than 0 0.3 because here now it's, uh, you know, the value produced here is 0 0.3, which should be the max of this guy, this guy, and whatever that guy was over there. And so, yeah, I mean, what um, what this figure is trying to show, so, so yeah, just to summarize, the, the pooling operation is very simple, right? So for every unit in the pooling stage, all we do is we take a look at some neighboring units in the previous stage and we just take the max value over all of those units and so that's called max pooling and so why is that useful why would people do that uh, that's what this figure is trying to um, illustrate so here you'll notice that um, the the values here in the on the detector the bottom stage are shifted by one between the top and the bottom here right so here it goes 0 0.11 0 0.2 and here, the 0 0.11, 0 0.2 are, are over here. And this 0 0.1 over here, it got shifted off over here. And now we're seeing what, well, this 0 0.3 here, well, I guess that was the value over here. So the idea is that, well, if you're shifting the image to the left or the right or up or down slightly, you know, you don't want that to affect the results of your neural network very much. And so this is what you're saying. So here, if we take this as our original input unit and we shift all of the um, values to the right what we end up, up is, is something that looks like this and actually so all the values on the bottom la layer in the detector stage are different right S but if we look at the pooling stage we see that actually the two values in the middle the two ones here are the same right so here are the two values on the left and the right are different but we see that these two values are the same and this is the invariance that they're trying to illustrate if you shift the input image to the left or right a little bit all of the kind of um units before pooling are going to change but if you um if you use this pooling step not all of the units are going to change it's going to reduce the number of uh, uh, units uh, that change. So, um, so that's the, the point of the, the max pooling, and I hope you understand that a, a little bit better now. Thanks for listening.